So we're back at it again. Still working on the piece. As you can see, I keep making shifts and changes and whatnot. It's trying to figure out exactly where I'm going. I do apologize for the darkness, lighting-wise, because uh, we're in a power outage. We're part of uh, we were part of the path of Michael, so we um, don't have power yet. A little frustrating, but you know I got enough natural sunlight to work here. So I'm going to start moving over into this area. One of the things you have to think about as you're working is how you're putting your colors together. What's your color composition? I like to sort of base things off of the color wheel. I mean, basically everything is based off the color wheel. So right now I'm noticing I've got a lot of purples right in here. This is sort of a deep dark blue purple. The hair, which will probably be my hair. This is in essence me. Um, will be darks, and then we're going to have these light areas, which will probably be yellow. So it seems like I'm moving towards a purple-yellow pair of complement composition. Now, that's not to say that's all that's going to happen in this composition, but that's sort of the dominant color schemes. And you need to um, consider that as you move forward on a piece. How are you going to um, compose your color? What is going to be your overriding color theme? And, you know... I didn't go into this piece thinking about, whoops, sorry, I lost my balance, um, what that might be. But I'm sort of letting that develop as I work on the piece. Um, sorry, I was trying to figure out where I was right there for a second. Um, so I've got an arm coming through here in front of this wine glass that is um, in front of this lady's woman's uh, purple deep purple dress here, so I'm trying to get some of that color laid in, get some of that reflection happening. So then the other area I want to sort of concentrate on today as I work on this piece is um, start to get this light area of this uh, jacket in place as well. Sorry, I'm trying to think about what I'm painting and speak at the same time. Not necessarily the easiest thing to do. But it just helps me. It's so much easier to talk about something as I'm doing it in terms of what it is I'm doing. Because admittedly a lot of this is intuitive. It's just what I think. So I'm reaching over to grab off my table some red. This glass of red wine here, I want to go ahead and lay the surface to the downside. This is what's on the top of the glass, so it's hitting more light. So we got that. Now we have this guy's white tunic right here that will sort of influence the coloring of the rest of this wine glass. So again, I'm making a lot of heavy pressure right there as I do that. Now I want to put some warm white. That's relatively warm, what's left on there. So nice big slurp of white right there for the rest of his, rest of the wine glass slash tunic. I'm going to break that plane just a little bit, drag it up. And you can see I've just grabbed some of that red I laid in. And then now we'll move into the tunic, but before I do that, I want to lay that hand in. Um, because it'll be easier to um, get the hand and then have the tunic behind it rather than the other way around. Again, I'm peeling some of this paper off. And as I said, I prefer the way the Richton art works because it that paper comes off so much easier. Um, so I'm thinking that this gentleman's hand, or this will be a black gentleman's hand, and he's gesturing saying, hey, give me two more. I need two more. We're not going to worry about two more what at this point. 
So I'm just getting in some of the color, that purple now that I laid in uh, last time I worked on this yesterday, um, probably won't even uh, be picked up. Now I like to use the alizarin crimson and oranges and maybe even a little bit of red for skin tone on the black gentleman. Um, just to help with that value, you know, <laughs> there's a reason white people are white. Called white because their skin tends to be very pale, like mine. And that's, you know, all the more so if we don't get much sunlight. Of course, you know, my son as a kid used to say, the brown and the peach people, referring to uh, kids in the neighborhood or the swimming pool in particular. It's always a little odd. <laughs> what exactly are you saying? So just trying to get some of this, again, I want some of this alizarin crimson. And then, so come in there and get that nice dark in there where his finger folds back. Palm tends to be a little lighter. I like that nice red tone in there. Sort of the pale, the pale is in sort of purpley pink. Speaking of purple, I'm going to grab that. Well, just a little of that back in here into the pad of the palm around the thumb and up into the wrist. across the top and with painting for me at least the way I paint I only put in as much detail as necessary to communicate what it is I'm trying to communicate so no thumbnail not necessary in this case um, but all the way on the other side these fingernails here you know, we're trying to communicate the elegance, the dressed upness, as if that were a word, of um, that woman. It just sort of helps communicate her by the virtue of her manicured nails. So again, the pads of the finger, the joints, down in. Little pale, we're going to lay some of the orange back in. And just because this is catching light here, I think I'll grab the yellow as well. And lay that just to catch this a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. Now, you can see a lot of my paintings that I've done, previous paintings, some other kinds of work, all on my website at gregleach.com. Unusual spelling to Greg, G-R-E-I-G, -E but you've probably noticed that already. So, I encourage you to take a look. You can see how some of these other paintings that I've done with this method have turned out, and you can see some other kinds of things that I do. And of course, there on the YouTube, the other videos, you can see watercolors, my cycling watercolors as well. I um, encourage you to check out those. You can sort of see my brain, the other side of my brain working in my other subject matter, and the whole idea of working with translucent versus opaque. A little bit more purple for the shadow side under this wrist, a little bit of this musculature. So because I've got the warm white here, I'm going to grab this other white, which I'll call my cool white, and mix that in. And that keeps me from uh, dragging one color through the other and sort of getting a mud. Sometimes a little bit of this mud is nice, but it's all about control while I drop 
on Wednesday. Um, so you want to make sure, so see here I'm blending it, and as you may have noticed, I don't have a rag in my hand, too many oil sticks in my hand, so I want to get that off of there, pick up that yellow oil stick, get some more of this orange in here, and just drag that through, and again now I'm going to come down in with the orange. Let's see, I'm just going to stay where I want that mix at, wipe it off, come back in here, get the undertone just a little bit. That's the wrong color. Here we go. So see here, I can just pop this paper off just that easy. Throw that in my recycling bin. That's how I want to go. That'll be that guy's face right there. So here, let's get a little bit of that in. So we have this gentleman who's making the gesture. See so just a bit of his face. Cheekbone. There. There he is. Flesh him out more later. All right, so now that I have this hand in, I can start to lay this um, um, come on, uniform in. So first, I want to lay these yellow buttons, gold buttons in. So I'm utilizing that orange sketch from before. Now you notice again, it doesn't pick up the color because over 24 hours, that oil stick has mostly dried, so it doesn't necessarily affect the yellows that I just put down. All right, so now we're going to come in. Now we've got, see this is where it's going to be a little confusing perhaps. So we've got his metals right here, and then this is like, so he's, I think a lot of these guys were flyers, naval flyers, so they've got wings as well. So that little badge right there, I think for right now, just lay this red in here for the uh, service stripes, combat stripes. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out. So we've got a little complication here. So. If this is his armpit and her shoulder is up underneath it and the arm's coming across here, that feels like his arm is too thin. So I want to bring, I want to get a cool color because I want to drag some of that cool. So now we're going to switch, fill up my hand with blue and purple. Is that blue? Nope. That one is. Okay, so now I've just got the blue, the purple, and then the whites. So I'm going to lay just, so here, that should be about where his armpit is. Yeah, if it comes up and then her arm being in there will be fine. So again, just like I did here, some of the wrinkles come in. All right, so that sort of gives you where I'm going right now. I'm going to uh, work on this some more off camera. Don't know if I'll get back in here. Um, and work on this more before I get power back or not. So hopefully it'll be a little brighter next time you get to see this. Of course, you know, I'm sitting here blending. And... Oh, another thing I wanted to say, and this will be a good time to show it over here, is you can always come back over. So see, like this is just a little bit too yellow. But so now, see how I can just lay over because that previous one has dried. But 
Now that's too <laughs> not yellow. So I'm going to come back in and lay just a little bit more yellow in here. Maybe a touch of orange down there. And lay it back in. Now this is great when you want it to be brighter highlighted. But now if areas like where you need to make a transition, it may be a little tougher with that with it having dried. So it's, a, you know, clearly I'm not going to finish a painting this scale in one go. So you sort of learn methodologies on how, where to break your day at, how to mix the colors back in again, all of that. So as I said to someone last night, I make paintings to learn something, and if I don't learn something, to me it's not a successful painting. I think I also made the rather grandiose claim that if I ever stop learning things when I paint, that's when I'll stop painting. Of course, when I stop painting, that just means I'll be doing some other form of art, like the stained glass I've started doing. Well, thanks for taking the time to look. Again, I'll post links to the website and also where you can buy the paint sticks through Amazon. That's actually my color palette. We'll talk about that next time if I remember to. Thanks for looking.